Welcome to an introduction to economics, brought to you by Parkbench Tutors and narrated by David Hopcroft. For further information about Parkbench Tutors, please visit parkbenchtutors.com. This short podcast is the fourth about the public sector and deals with financing the public sector. In order for public expenditure to take place, there must be revenues. The aim of public expenditure is to maximise the welfare for society. There are three sources that a government will rely on for revenue. The largest amount of money comes from taxation in various forms. Most of us are aware of paying income tax on earnings and value-added tax, VAT, on purchases. But there are many other forms of taxation. The government can also borrow money, either internally or externally, and it can print money. The equation for government spending may be written as G minus T equals B plus delta M. Taxes are compulsory transfers of money from private individuals, institutions or groups to the government. There are two obvious forms of taxes. Direct taxes are levied on income, on wealth or spending power. Indirect taxes are levied on goods and services. Indirect taxes may be applied ad valorem as a percentage of value or at a rate which includes tax at a flat rate, or as a lump sum. We can group the effect that taxes have in three ways. A proportional tax would relate to a percentage that is paid in tax and remains constant as income rises. A progressive tax will have the percentage increasing as income rises. A regressive tax will have the percentage falling as the income rises. The map shows how these three types will vary with income. A lump sum is a fixed payment that is made regardless of income, so is a form of regressive taxation, since it becomes a smaller percentage of total income if the income rises. The average rate of tax would be given by T divided by Y. The marginal rate of tax is the increase in tax for each monetary unit of increase in income. It would be given by delta T divided by delta Y. The first attempt to set out a series of principles for taxation was made by Adam Smith, and these are still very relevant today. His first was that taxation should be related to the ability of people to pay, so that those who earned the most would carry a larger share of taxation. The second was that payment should be clear to both taxpayers and tax collectors. This is reflected in the idea of value-added tax, where the percentage is known and can be checked by the consumer or where income tax is levied as a percentage. The third was that the method and timing of a payment should be convenient. Most people would agree that payment of taxes on purchases is best done if the tax is paid at the time of purchase, and the taxes on income are best done for most people if they are made in the period in which the money is earned. However, this could cause a problem. Should the income be each month, or each year, or over several years? The United Kingdom has adopted a method we call pay-as-you-earn, P-A-Y-E, which deducts tax during each pay period, which for most is monthly. Finally, the cost of collection should be minimum. In addition to these ideas, we would now add a number of other features. To plan a budget, it is necessary to know with some degree of accuracy how much tax will be calculated, which means making estimates of income and expenditure, and also of profits that can be taxed. Since an objective of the government should be to try and achieve equity, it is also important to know the distribution of the tax burden. There should be no discrimination between income groups other than for the purpose of pursuing equity. Finally, any tax system should have flexibility for automatic adjustment. There would be little purpose in having a system that required frequent adjustments since the cost of administration would rise. The purpose of laying out a budget, which is usually done only once or twice a year, is so that expenditure and taxation are determined at the same time. This also makes it clearer to taxpayers what the revenue is to support. In the United Kingdom there is usually only one budget for the year when the tax rates for the year are set out. How should we determine tax? One suggestion is called the benefits principle, where payment of tax is made according to benefit received. However, different individuals place different value on benefits. 
Here the benefit is expressed by demand. Individual A has a demand curve DADA and individual B a demand curve DBDB. The sum of the curves is DMDM. Assuming that marginal costs and average costs are the same, consider the demand when quantity Q is supplied. Individual A is prepared to pay tax S and individual B is prepared to pay tax T. Now imagine this going across millions of tax-paying individuals and across a large number of public goods, and it is easy to see the problem with this approach. Far more common is the adoption of the principle of taxation according to ability to pay. However, we should point out that there are a number of ways of interpreting this. We should look briefly at three of these. In all cases, we are considering how much people can afford to pay. The ideal of act so the idea of equal to absolute sacrifice means the loss of total utility should be the same for all taxpayers. So on our map we show two individuals, A and B. A has the higher income and the loss of utility needs to be the same for both. Therefore, AD needs to equal BC. When A's income is taxed to reduce it from YA to Y dash A and B's income is taxed to reduce it from YB to Y dash B we can see clearly that A is going to pay more tax than B. Equal proportional sacrifice requires that the tax should have an equal impact on the total utilities of all taxpayers. Again, we have our society of two individuals, A and B. The proportional impact on total utility would require that AF divided by AYA be the same as BE divided by BYB. The slope of total utility represents the marginal utility of income. To equalize marginal utilities, a progressive tax is used such that the post-tax income of each will be Y1. In this model, we see that A is now paying a much larger amount of tax than in either of the previous models. So equality of sacrifice is not quite that straightforward. Before considering what actually is happening, let us turn to ways of trying to achieve equality of sacrifice. There are three ways that are commonly considered. We can base taxes on income, measuring all the sources of income for the purpose of taxation. We can base taxes on wealth, but that poses the problem of how we value and measure assets. How do we allow for inflation? And what happens if assets are held in more than one name? We could also tax by expenditure-based taxes. In other words, raise our taxes through tax on goods and services. This would be indirect taxation. Who actually bears the tax burden? The term formal instance is used to describe how tax burdens are distributed. So income tax is a tax on the person earning the income and excise duty is on tobacco is a tax on the smoker buying a tobacco. Effective incidence refers to how a tax change affects the behaviour of a taxpayer, including spending and saving patterns. The cost of adjusting to a tax change is called the excess burden. On the map shown, the demand curve is dx dx, the supply curve before tax is sx, and after tax it is added, it becomes sx plus t. So the quantity consumed now falls from q1 to q2. The tax revenue is represented by rectangle abcd. The loss of consumer surplus by triangle cde, and this is called the excess burden. The excess burden highlights inefficiency, which is further shown in this map. The pre-tax Pareto optimal equilibrium is at point E, where the community indifference curve CIC1 is tangential to the production possibility frontier. An indirect tax on good X will shift the price to consumers to P2, P2. Production moves to point F, and the community indifference curve to CIC2, which is lower than CIC1. Direct taxes have been argued against on the grounds there may be a disincentive to work. On the map on the left, OB represents maximum leisure and the budget line for the individual is along AB. Point E1 is chosen on the highest indifference curve, L1. At this point, the individual is prepared to work HB hours per day. Tax reduces income to shift the budget line to CB. The individual may now choose point E2 and only offer H1B hours of work. 
On the other hand, the individual could respond as in the map on the right, shifting from E1 to E2 and increasing the hours of work. It's important to recognise that either outcome is possible. So what does happen in the United Kingdom? Most revenue is raised by direct taxation. In the tax year 2011 to 2012 there were bans, so that tax started at 10% and then rose to as high as 50%. Assuming an individual had no allowances, then the first £2,560 would be taxed at 10%, the next 35000 at 20% and so on. However, taxation does not start on the first pound earned in the United Kingdom. A personal allowance of £8,105 is allowed before taxation starts. The figure rises for certain age groups. There is still an upper limit for personal allowances. Businesses aim to make a profit and these are taxed in the United Kingdom through corporation tax. In 2012 the rate stood at 25%, having fallen from 28% in 2009. A further source of revenue is capital gains tax, but it should be noted that the sale of your home would not be taxed in this way. There are different rates, but the common rate of 18% will apply to most capital gains. It should be noted that there are exemptions from capital gains tax. Inheritance tax has been used as a means of redistributing wealth, though the allowance before the tax is paid has been rising steadily. The tax rate of 40% is charged for inheritances over the threshold, but many families will choose to dispose of an estate through a trust to avoid this taxation. After income tax, value-added tax, VAT, is the next largest source of revenue, and the rate has risen since it was first introduced in 1973. There are some goods that are zero-rated and exempt from VAT. Customs duty is charged for certain imports, Given that there are around 14,000 different classifications, you might wonder how this fits in with Adam Smith's suggestion that taxes should be clear and simple for both taxpayer and taxman. Finally, excise duty on tobacco and alcohol is used as a source of revenue. Duty on tobacco has also been increased to try and reduce smoking. This is an example of a tax to provide a partial solution to a negative externality. Smoking harms individuals, directly or through secondary effects, and raises health care costs. Are there alternatives to the existing tax system? One suggestion has been used to use negative taxation. The idea behind this is that those who earn above a certain amount are taxed according to income, while those who earn less are entitled to accept a receipt of a sum as a benefit. In theory, the system would appear to be easier to administrate but user charges could produce unwanted effects. There are several criticisms of the current system of taxation and benefits. Here are just a few of them. Child benefit is paid regardless of income, so has little effect on poorer families and is not in keeping with equity or redistribution of wealth. The current system is difficult to administer, costs are high. In some cases, benefits exceed minimum wage, so the system acts as a disincentive to work. The criticism of negative tax is that putting user charges on services like the NHS, although it would help reflect true costs, would face poorer families with choices such as whether to choose health care or education for the family. It can also be argued that it is unlikely that some families would spend a receipt on benefits. There are some actions, such as prevention of infectious diseases, that would still need to remain under central control. Finally, it can be argued that providing free education and almost free health care are a part of equity in redistribution. We will briefly mention two other sources of revenue. Borrowing is achieved by issuing treasury bills or securities, the total owing being referred to as the national debt. This has been increasing in recent years and becomes a problem if the money has to be borrowed from external sources. Finally, a government can simply print more money. This is called an increase in note issue. The disadvantage is that there is a risk of high inflation and a loss of confidence in the currency. This ends our podcast on the financing of the public sector, brought to you by Parkbench Tutors and narrated by David Hopcroft.
Thank you for watching and for listening. We wish you success with your studies. For further information on Parkbench Tutors, please visit parkbenchtutors.com.